This is Kali Yuga, the time of materialism. Venus becomes very important right now because of Venus being the significator of materialism. Materialistic life and all the things which Kali Yuga signify is also signified by Venus as well. As we have learned in the previous video of this series that Venus indicates happiness. It is very essential and crucial to check the house where Venus is situated in and which house and which house lords are falling in 1, 4, 7, 10, 5, 9 and 11 houses from Venus. Those houses are supported and other houses are not supported in this Kali Yuga. That means the house which are not supported by Venus, you are not going to get materialistic success related to that particular house. As I have already said that 311 is not a very favorable condition and good results only come after much hard work, patience and waiting for at least the mid part of life. Take for example, Venus is situated in the third house. Fourth house is having a 212 connection with Venus. This indicates that the property, vehicle, etc. are not a person is not deriving happiness from property vehicle as 4,000 degrees general happiness. Generally, the person is unhappy also. Point two is that as per the materialistic notions of the society, he is not having a proper property or vehicle which should be considered apt for his status. It is like someone having a vehicle which doesn't suit their personality as per the standards of this materialistic society, whereas they themselves may feel that their vehicle and property is sufficient for them and they may not have a desire to have it. Now, if the fourth lord is well placed from Venus in that particular scenario, though the vehicle and property of the person is not up to the mark as per this materialistic society, they are happy. They are satisfied and contented in themselves as the house is not well placed, but the Lord is good. In the case when the house and Lord both are not well placed in that scenario, one is having no happiness from vehicle and property and the vehicle and property that they have are not up to the mark either on the standards of society or either on the standards of their needs. When the house and the house lord both are well situated, one is extremely successful in the matters related to those houses and derive a good amount of happiness related to that house. This needs to be checked with every house. If you want to judge horoscope properly, this is one of the very important golden techniques that if you apply it properly, I don't think there will be any another technique that you will need to use for a horoscope reading. All these techniques, as I have already told before in the principle, come from my extensive experience. If you have faith in me, faith in my words, and you know how to properly apply astrological principles, this series will make you a very competent astrologer who can predict events and things like a professional and as a professional trained by Shiva Maharaj, you will be better than 90% of the astrologers in this world. Another point that I have told in the previous video is that Venus being the Karaka for materialism, the strength of the Venus, the strength of the sign lord of Venus, and the strength of the Navamsha Lord of Venus decides whether one is successful or not. Going further, this is Kali Yuga, ruled by Venus. You know, this like Nadi astrology takes the position of Jupiter and planets in trying to Jupiter to check what one have done in the previous life and according to that, how one is supposed to have 
do things in this life. I have seen many Nadi readings. I think back in 2014 to 17, I asked for many people to share if they have got done a Nadi palm reading and collected it, seen the results and matched it with what is happening in their life. And I was utterly disappointed and dissatisfied. Then I collected those horoscopes where people knew about their past life, have went through past regression therapy and multiple such things and then derived a rule. Derived a rule and that rule is you should check the position of Venus. If Venus is good, powerful, powerful, not, no, not power, good. I have to demarcate it. If Venus is good, one have done good karmas. If Venus is bad, one have done bad karmas. Good karmas related to the planet who are positively influencing Venus and bad karma related to the planet who is negatively influencing Venus. Right? And as per the good and bad karma that one have done, they have to suffer in this life related to that karma also. Right? I think in the previous video, I have also talked about the D60 of Venus and the strength of Venus and the D60 of Venus. If Venus goes to a good D60, it indicates happiness. Venus in D60 indicates happiness or misery. Venus in D1 indicates successful or unsuccessful life. Because Venus, the sign of Venus and the planet in trines to Venus indicate the karma. This is a bit natural to understand that when Venus is powerful, one have a lot of karma. And this horoscope indicates about this life. So Venus is powerful in this life. You have to do a lot of karma, very impactful karma. Specifically related to the world, related to the country you are born in, related to the society. You have to done a lot of karma, huge karmas and major karmas. Let's take a few examples. In the horoscope of Mahatma Gandhi, Venus is in Ona Rashi and you have to essentially check the dispositor of Venus as well. The strength of the planet comes through the dispositor, right? Powerful Venus and Venus dispositor, powerful. The Rashi Lord of Venus powerful indicates one have great karmas to do and those karmas will be very impactful. <clears throat> Venus is in Libra, his own sign. This makes Venus powerful. In Shadbal, Venus is having 116% of strength, more than 100% of strength. This makes Venus powerful again, indicating that Mahatma Gandhi had a lot of karma to do, which he actually did. See the horoscope of Nelson Mandela. Once again, you will see Venus is in his own Rashi. In Shadbal, Venus is having 138% of strength, quite powerful. Nelson Mandela also had a lot of huge karma to do, which have greatly impacted his society, people around him, his country and the international world as well. See the example of Bill Gates, who have Venus in own Rashi in the fifth house, once again indicating that the person have to do great karmas or have to do a whole lot of karmas. In the horoscope of Steve Jobs, Venus is situated in the sign of Jupiter and he is further getting expected by Jupiter itself. The sign Lord Jupiter is very powerful being retrograde and this Venus is Varguttam also being in the same Rashi and same Navamsha Sagittarius indicating that Steve Jobs also had to do a lot of karma specifically impactful karma. Right? There can be many horoscopes like this. For example, take the horoscope of A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada who was the main spirit behind ISKCON. Venus is debilitated but is situated with Mercury. The sign lord in the sign itself and in Shadbal, Venus is having 100% one. Okay. 
it is 100 percent makes the planet powerful though not much powerful but the sign lord and the sign is a very good thing to have this makes the sign and the sign lord both powerful and i have already talked about the sign lord of venus and the power that the sign lord of venus acquires which indicates the level of karma that one have to do the level of uh, things that one will be a trigger to right so the strength of venus in this kaliyuga indicate how great and how impactful karmas you are going to do to change the world society country around you another thing is as i have already told i am not taking examples as it belong to clients but say venus is situated venus is under benefic influence you will do good karmas you have done good karmas good so venus is influenced by malefic will do bad karmas bad so suppose uh, this is a uh, venus with mercury and this is a positive mercury not afflicting venus so one have to do positive karmas related to mercury one have to do positive karma related to speech related to finance related to communication and related to those houses ruled by mercury any planet can be positively or negatively connected to venus that depends on how the planet is even saturn when it is exalted and aspects uh, venus because it is exalted he will not give bad influence to venus but will good influence to venus only remember afflicted and weak planets give bad result and powerful planets planets in own rashi own navamsha var guttam etc give good result so take the benefic and malefic factors own rashi exaltation var guttam amulya trikona good factor that indicates good karma benefic planets indicate good karma and other conditions indicate bad karma even malefics like rahu mars saturn when they are in own rashi own navamsha var guttam moon trikona exaltation they also indicate good and positive karma related to these planets and related to the house lorded by these planets venus is very important to judge the past life and know the karmas that one is supposed to do in this human life it is very very important now going further as we have discussed the role of venus and saturn i will want to go deeper into it so what i told you when venus is powerful saturn loses his power when saturn is powerful venus loses his power both of them one of them should be either strong and other weak that is the good condition both powerful or both weak is not a very good condition it makes the horoscope it it negatively impacts the horoscope venus and saturn both powerful both become ineffective and the life is a challenge wherever whereas venus and saturn both weak also makes the life challenge as one have to struggle in both the cases all right now there is like few more added points to this you have to understand that we the relationship between venus and saturn venus is the female and like oh like uh, i i want to like find a good word to tell it see saturn indicate aberration saturn indicates aberration the house of saturn with respect to venus see venus is enjoyment right saturn is controlling factor ignorance the nexus between venus and saturn indicates to achieve success in what matter to enjoy what result signified by venus you ignore what for an example venus is situated in the 10th house saturn is situated in the ascendant to achieve success in professional life you ignore your health 
this is the venus saturn nexus which should be very closely seen in the horoscope that is point 1 point 2 the transit of venus and the transit of saturn saturn suppose saturn is transiting the 11th house positive transit positive transit means 11th house in the ashtaka varga of saturn is having good point and saturn is transiting this okay okay now yeah you ignore what now you have to understand saturn is going through the 11th house positive transit that means 11th house is having more than four points in the ashtaka varga of saturn you are going to have gains you will not start getting those gains until and unless venus transits the 11th house or transits over the 11th house the good or bad result that saturn is supposed to give you you will only start realizing it after venus have activated the result this is good for transit and good for dasha also whatever bad result saturn is going to give you you will start witnessing that bad or good result only after crossing venus dasha saturn, saturn dasha venus antar dasha or <clears throat> venus dasha saturn venus dasha saturn antar dasha or saturn dasha venus antar dasha right this is like uh, say from sun saturn is situated in the 11th house situated in ukchaya so because from sun saturn is situated in the 11th house sun being the karaka for authority and 11th house being the house of finance one will get financial authority in this dasha antar dasha of sun okay but one will get financial authority in the dasha antar dasha of sun only after crossing the venus antar dasha or only after crossing the venus antar dasha in antar dasha of another planet which is benefitly situated from sun so for the distribution of the result of saturn it have to get activated by venus the house where saturn is situated or the house whose result saturn is going to give that house or the lord of that house should first be activated by venus if one wants to desire it, it, uh, see sorry only after that one is going to have good results related to that house this is very important a point See, sometimes what happens uh, while making my video, my mind, my thinking goes very fast, and specifically for the betterment of students, I have to, you know, like I'm trying to teach it very slowly, very explaining every point. So, you know, tongue slip <laughs> tends to happen as I'm finishing this technique. I'm already thinking on the next thing that I have to talk about. So, okay, excuse me for that. Okay, the, this point is pretty clear, I think. now you have to understand one more peculiar point with this venus saturn relationship saturn see this analogy seems out of place this is based on my experience though there is a tussle between sun and saturn that tussle is conflict resolved by venus the house where sun is situated and the house where saturn is situated either these two houses are completely deactivated in your horoscope none of them are giving you result or both of them are highly activated in your horoscope or when one is activated another is going back take it wrong sun in the 10th house saturn in the 8th house both of them are highly activated you are very good in a professional position also but defamation is also coming sun in the 10th house saturn in the 12th house both deactivated you are neither getting a job not able to spend money not having money not able to spend it both it 
Sun in the fourth house, Saturn in the sixth house. One highly activated, another non-activated. You are having a lot of disease and because of that, your mother is very tense or you are having a lot of disease and not able to have a property or not able to have a vehicle which you desperately want to have. So sixth house is highly activated, fourth house is not activated. Now to create a bridge between these two houses, to pacify both of these houses, you need to do the remedy of Venus. Do the remedy of the house where Venus is situated, do the remedy of the Rashi where Venus is situated and do a general remedy of Venus. So you can do mantra chanting for Venus, mantra chanting to of a deity related to Venus. You can do a Homa related to Venus. You can donate things related to Venus. Right, or you can donate things to a Devi temple. These things you have to do to resolve this particular conflict. Now there is Venus has a strange relationship with many planets. One of them is Mars. So this is a quick Nari rule that when Venus and Mars are badly placed, badly placed is two twelve six eight. When Venus and Mars are 2, 12 or 6, 8 to each other, one of the three things happen. Either one is not married or if one is not, if one is married, there is no happiness from marriage. And if one is married also, there is happiness from marriage also, then the ultimate happiness from marriage, that is child, that is not happening. The same result more or less will also be there when Venus and Mars are in 3, 11 to each other because as I told you, 311 is not a very good connection, to be very honest with you. Right. This is a basic point. The thing is, the desire of Venus is getting fulfilled by Mars. The comfort, the enjoyment that Venus will give you will only come through the things that Mars signifies. So first of all, this nexus between Venus and Mars indicates you, indicates that indicates about marriage. That is point one. This is a quick funda to check marriage. It applies in 80% of the horoscope. So you can just go and quickly tell it. This rule is, see, Venus and Mars in 2, 12, 6, 8 to each other. Both afflicted and weak, no marriage at all. Venus, Mars, 2, 12, and 6, 8 to each other, both powerful. Marriage will be there, but child will not. Right? So based on they being powerful or they being weak, you have to predict the result. Venus and Mars in 2, 12, 6, 8 to each other, one is powerful, another is not. Delayed marriage, but bad marriage. Quick technique. Now the thing is, if you want to get result related to the house where Venus is situated and as we have learned, Venus is materialistic success and materialistic success, success and happiness. So generally the house where Venus is situated, the Rashi where Venus is situated, you are not having happiness related to that house. If you are not having happiness related to that house, it is particularly because of the reason that you have to do good karmas related to the house where Mars is situated. You have to do remedies related to the house where Mars is situated. And all these things related to all other remedies related to the house, the Rashi, Mars is situated. Now, see, the seventh lord is always inimical to the Lagna lord. So for Leo Lagna, Cancer Lagna, the seventh lord Saturn is inimical to Sun and Moon both. For Jupiter, Mercury is inimical because for Jupiter Lagna, Mercury will be the seventh lord. For Mercury Lagna, Jupiter will be the seventh lord. The Lagna of Venus and Mars are only those two ascendants where the seventh lord is neutral and not inimical to each other. This is something that have to be checked properly. See, there is a combination. If Venus, and this is my very old research, I told it to one of my students from Kolkata. I'm not telling you completely about it. Right. Somehow this, this I'm just telling the limited uses. 
वीनस कनेक्टेड टू मार्स द रिजल्ट इज वीनस गोइंग टू द नवांशा ऑफ मार्स एंड ऑल्सो कनेक्टेड टू मार्स I see this result in D1, D9, D30, D12, and D60. D1, D9, D30, D12, D60, five divisional charts. Out of these five divisional charts, in three divisional charts, if it happens, then the result told is one is having extramarital affair. Four out of five divisional charts, or five out of five divisional chart, if Venus and Mars are strongly connected. then one will for sure have an extra marital affair okay if this connection happens in less than 3 horoscopes or if the connection is not strong weak weak connection then one will not have extra marital affair but the connection between venus and mars is also very important to have libido so basically out of these five divisional charts if venus and mars are nowhere connected not even in one divisional chart in that scenario one loses libido and interest in sexual affairs and to marry one such person is a bad decision see mercury is unuch saturn is unuch that is another condition but not having a libido is altogether another condition so the relationship between mars and venus in at least one of this divisional chart is very important otherwise there can be a problem though classically it is told that when venus and mars are connected in d9 where at the same time venus is all uh, when venus and mars are connected where uh, venus is also in the navamsha of mars then one is like one touch, one kisses or touches the private part of their partner from another gender whereas when the same thing is related to saturn venus is in the navamsha of saturn and also connected to saturn it makes one have a same gender relationship say gay and lesbian however my experience is if venus is in the navamsha of saturn and also connected to saturn See Navamsha of Saturn and also getting aspected or conjoined by Saturn. This is to be checked in D one and D nine chart. Connection should be checked in D one and Rashi should be checked in D nine chart. In that scenario, one have same gender sexual encounters. Okay, if out of D one, D nine, D twelve, D thirty, D sixty, out of these divisional charts, at least in three. divisional charts this connection is being made between saturn and uh, venus one have a whole one have a lot of same gender relationship if the connection is found in four or more than four divisional charts then one can also be into same gender relationship altogether this is a rule you can close your eyes apply the rule and can predict as i told you you take 30 horoscopes and predict and it will match in more than 25 horoscopes without any doubt shubha mahalok is telling you take the word okay my point was the libido nexus okay the libido nexus venus and mars and the libido nexus to get the result of the house where venus is situated you have to make the houses of mars well placed now there is one more take the rashi where venus is situated in say venus is situated in pisces now check from this pisces where the houses of mars fall because venus and mars have an inherent connection so from pisces the rashi of mars will fall in the second house and ninth house okay the result of the second house and ninth house are good in the life of the native that means native is rich also fortunate also suppose venus is in capricorn 
the how the rashis of mars fall in the 4th house and 11th house from the sign of aries so one is happy one have a good heart one have a home property mother have a good life and one is blessed with income and fulfillment of wishes and desires without any problem so take the house where venus is situated in and check which house from the house of venus is loaded by mars and one for sure have blessings related to those houses without any doubt okay now let's go a little bit further into it the venus and mars <clears throat> see the connection between venus and mars is also very important in this particular regard that venus is the passion so the mars is the passion whereas venus is the love when there is a passion but not love you are using the person when there is love but not passion it is a cheating with the person okay so the point is if mars is weak the result of venus is automatically lost if venus is weak the result of mars is automatically lost if venus is powerful mars automatically gets the result if mars is powerful venus automatically gets the result both of them powerful makes a balanced personality one of them strikingly powerful and another of them strikingly weak makes a disbalance in the personality and the disbalance is related to the weaker plan is to sorry stronger plan say venus powerful mars weak one have no love but only passion mars powerful venus weak one have a lot of love but no passion right so these two planets are complementary to each other if mars is 100% powerful just by the rule of their natural connection with each other venus also gets the 50% of strength without any so you say if venus is powerful mars dasha is also going to be good and if mars is powerful venus dasha is also going to be good it is written nowhere i am telling it to you you test it experience it and tell give me the feedback it is going to match now there is one more part <clears throat> the connection of venus with jupiter now this venus and jupiter is like good nexus between them jupiter because venus know about mrit sanjeevani vidya the knowledge using which you can make the dead person live again and he is the teacher of the demons Jupiter is the teacher of the gods he also want to have this knowledge and to gather this knowledge he sent his son to Venus and there is a long story Venus want to get something from uh, sorry Jupiter wants to get something from Venus so two houses are there <clears throat> one is the house related one is the house where venus is situated and one is the house where jupiter is situated both are situated in the same house this will happen only to same when you get the result related to the to get the result related to jupiter you have to suffer in the house related to venus to get the result related to venus you have to suffer in the house related to jupiter both of them situated in the same house say both of them situated in the seventh house good business bad marital life good marital life bad business other case you say venus in the 11th house and jupiter in the 12th house if you get good money your uh, nights are restless if you are getting good sleep at night income is getting problematic right so this is this nexus you get one of the result point 1 point 2 is venus and jupiter are two benefits but their ways are entirely different 
द वे ऑफ वीनस इज टू ऑलवेज स्टैंड विथ दो आर सपोर्टिंग यू डिस्पाइट द फैक्ट दे मे बी रॉन्ग ऑल्सो बट यू सपोर्ट दैट दिस इज अ टेंडेंसी दैट यू फाइंड इन वीनस एंड दो आर बोर्न इन दिनसियन एस एंड right venus stands with their kinsmen despite the fact that they can be wrong also whereas jupiter goes on the other side jupiter stands with dharma and may not stand with the one who is not following that dharma even don't matter how close they are to jupiter to understand it in this way that venus and jupiter indicates the two extremes of the horoscope you are highly focused in both either you are highly focused in both these houses or both these houses are very very activated from the previous rule you know one house is positively activated another house is negatively activated but they are greatly active take the same example venus in the 12th house Uh, sorry venus in the 11th house jupiter in the 12th house both of these houses are strongly activated you are earning money losing your sleep in the night for earning money because venus is situated there you are standing with your people or dependent on your people whichever house venus is situated in in that house you are dependent on people your kinsmen people around you family friends etc venus situated in the 11th house your income comes through family friends etc whereas jupiter in the 12th house we are you are very ethical in spending it now there will be a tussle those friends siblings kinsmen family members who are helping you on the money will demand that why you follow so much dharma in expenditure why you cannot just spend it because we are saying this will give rise to a tussle which will be very difficult to con- which will be very difficult to come at peace with this is something that you will have to constantly deal with so keep this particular thing in mind okay okay this is very necessary if venus is situated in the fourth house you can only enjoy with your friends family members etc right so venus whichever house it is situated in you need to get dependent on people to enjoy the result of that house one last point related though i can go on tell you 10 points related to venus jupiter strange relationship right this can be easily found out and this is very easy to understand right this is there is no difficulty in doing but not spending it much Not 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 expending it much. I know that this morning, people who are listening to the video may have got the crux of the technique by now. But one more point to understand: Venus and Jupiter relationship. Understand it this way that Jupiter. is the karaka of the jeev soul and venus is the karaka for the life jeev the desire to live and venus is longevity venus jupiter well placed from each other one have desire to live throughout their life venus jupiter well not well placed they lose their desire to live before the end of their life getting my point this is essential because venus is the karaka for longevity having with sanjeevni vidya you have to see which house and house lord is well placed from venus the house and the house lord which is well placed from venus the relatives related to that house will be in your life for long otherwise they will not live for long 
the planet can be situated the house lord can be situated with venus but if they are afflicted then also in that case the happiness related to that relative is not long lasting so to say if the ninth lord is not well placed from venus your father either may die early or leave you early remain separated remain aloof doesn't give care to you or doesn't fit or you know follow their role as a father this can be one of the major issue okay this venus jupiter point that i was telling you that if venus jupiter are not well placed it is generally that one have lost the desire of living and in just spending time waiting to die or leave the mortal coil or it generally venus jupiter not being well placed generally indicate those conditions that see either the person doesn't want to live right because the desire of living is lost but the longevity is still left that kind of a scenario it is generally good for vanaprastha ashram where the person have nothing left to do and they are just living so they engage highly in spiritual activities so the, the uh, thing also have a positive aspect to it there is one more point that venus jupiter being 2 12 6 8 to each other also indicate those conditions in life where you have no control over the consequences or the thing going around you you are forced to bear with the condition you are forced to live in the condition not being able to change it you just have to wait for it and pass this is very painful venus jupiter 6 8 2 12 to each other it is like you know like you want to do something for your mother suppose but somehow because of some reason or the other reason you are forced that you cannot do it this can be because of the approach of mother behavior of mother your approach your mother's approach or suppose you want to support your parents but you are not having enough money to support them any kind of problem can be but generally it indicates a situation where the fate is very cruel to the person he wants to do something but cannot do because of his hands getting tied okay <clears throat> now there is one more point <clears throat> Jupiter and Venus, both of them get Kendra Adipati Dosha. <clears throat> Kendra Adipati Dosha and Kendra Adipati Dosha is when a planet become the Lord of two neutral houses. Kendras are neutral and second and twelfth house is neutral. So when both the Rashis of the planet falls in the fourth, seventh, tenth, second or twelfth house, one gets Kendra Adipati Dosha. <clears throat> Moon, Mercury, Venus, Jupiter get it. Maximum Kendra Adipati Dosha is born by Jupiter. After that, Venus. After that, Mercury, and in the end, Moon. Because Jupiter and and there is only one escape for Kendra Adipati Dosha. That the Lord or the planet who is getting Kendra Adipati Dosha should not be well placed. If the planet who is getting Kendra Adipati Dosha is well placed, then one leads a miserable life. So to say. venus for someone born in aries and scorpio ascendant jupiter for someone born in gemini and virgo ascendant mercury for someone born in sagittarius and pisces ascendant and moon for someone born in libra ascendant capricorn ascendant and Aries ascendant should not be well placed; otherwise, the life is miserable. In the same condition, in the uh, like, though it is, I can say this is only applicable to Venus only, but because we are talking of Jupiter also, and I am expanding this Kendra Adipati rule, <clears throat> it is essential. that the rashi lord of jupiter and the rashi lord of venus 
should not be equally powerful then venus and jupiter for the person to have a good life say venus is also exalted rashi lord of venus is also exalted that is condition the result of venus is not good the challenges in life jupiter is also in own rashi the rashi lord of jupiter is also in own rashi not a good condition the results are challenged the good result related to the planet this jupiter and venus and where they are placed is challenged troublesome one have to wait one have to have patience to go through the result also venus and jupiter both being equally powerful venus also exalted jupiter also exalted venus in own rashi jupiter in own rashi venus mulu trigon jupiter mulu trigon venus also varvottam jupiter also varvottam is also not a very good condition as per my experience two different type of approaches to different type of motive is pushing the person there is a need that the person should work hard but the person want to party hard what happens he goes into the tussle he work hard living party hard internally dissatisfied naturally he will go to party hard not work hard money will extinguish he will lead a miserable life so venus and jupiter should not be equally strong one is stronger than the other more glaring the difference bet venus exalted jupiter debilitated jupiter exalted venus debilitated best condition easy success because there is one focus one motive na there is no disturbing factors there is a thing niruddesh without target i will talk about in the moon section also but right now i also talk it venus jupiter both powerful equally powerful one have no specific target to achieve in life they are confused between choices end up doing nothing wasting right life without target life without purpose just passing time so not a good situation to be in do i have to deal with a few more few more specific things related to venus but uh, i think this video is getting very long so leave it for the time being okay thank you for watching the video have a good